Hey and welcome back to a new video. If you look at the development in our industry in the recent years when it comes to the cases and the coolers, it is quite impressive what is going on. For example, some cases from Lian Li, as example, you get a lot more these days for a lower price. Same goes for air coolers and AIOs, and that's kind of counter to what is happening in the rest of our industry, where things are becoming more expensive. And for example, also Jace 2 cents recently published a video of a $55 thermal ride AIO and how much it offers. It's actually a coincidence that I offered this thermal ride air cooler a couple of weeks ago from China because I spotted this and I was impressed how much you get for the money. Now it's also available in Germany. I spotted this for 44 euros. It's an air cooler. 44 euros is not super cheap, but it also comes with an LCD built in, which makes this cooler probably one of the cheapest cooler with this type that you can find. And with thermal ride, it's typically also that it's not only super cheap, but the performance is typically also quite nice. And that's what I want to find out in today's video. If the Burst Assassin 120 Vision is a good purchase or not. Thermal Greasy Duronaut is our new high-end thermal paste and the successor of Cryonaut. It's even better performing, it is much easier to apply, it is cheaper and it's much more durable. That's where the name comes from. Especially if you're now maybe considering to buy a new PC, then I would highly recommend that you're looking into this thermal paste. So let's continue with this video. And for the performance comparison, I already set up this system, which is already running with a 9800X 3D, cooled by a Noctua NHD 15 Generation 2. So that should be the best air cooler you can typically get right now. But it's also, I think, one of the most expensive or the most expensive cooler, but at least it should be a good performance comparison. The 9800X 3D is not an easy to cool CPU and after 10 minutes under load, the peak temperature is 91.9 degrees Celsius and the clock is about 5100 megahertz, while the power consumption of the CPU is constantly about 150 watts. And currently the fans are hooked up to my bench table and set to 50% fan speed. And we have a very low noise level of 30.5 decibels out of 30 centimeters distance. And we are now retesting with 100% fan speed and at this level you can definitely hear the fans a lot more. The noise level increases to 47 to 48 decibels. And after again 10 minutes we see peak temperature of 86.1 degrees Celsius with 100% fan speed and we see an increased CPU core clock. That is something you always have to pay attention to with a 9800X 3D, so about 5150 megahertz due to the lower temperature. But the CPU package power is still roughly the same, about 150 watts. And with our base results we can remove the NHD 15 Gen 2 and then switch over to the thermal ride. And Noctua cooler is already removed. And we can finally take a look inside this box that also arrived exactly in this condition here. They were not super careful with transportation, but, but I hope the unit inside is not damaged. And especially with those LCD coolers, everything comes down to the software, which seems to be also a thermal ride software that I have to download. I never used it before, so that will be really interesting how well this is executed. All kind of accessories. And this seems to be the display unit. I didn't know that it's a separate thing that you probably just attach with magnets on top. Interesting. Cute little heatsink, at least compared to the NHD 15 Gen 2. Nevertheless, we have six heat pipes that are built in, so definitely should have some cooling capability. Also, the build quality seems to be pretty nice. I also like the black finish on the entire heatsink. Seems to be black powder coated. And we have, we have, as I said, six heat pipes in here. That should be good. And also it was packaged quite well, so I see no damages on the heatsink, even though the packaging did not look good. Mounting mechanism is also super simple, same as Noctua, just rotated by 90 degrees, but it's very easy to use. Got the heatsink mounted. And the first fan is also installed and what I noticed on the secondary fan is that it's a reverse blade fan. So small interesting detail. And we will start again with a 50% fan speed and check how loud this is. And with 31 decibels basically the same as Noctua and super to compare. But before we jump into the performance testing I first want to install the display that goes on top which will be connected via USB and also SATA. For the moment just plugged in and without the software running. 
After installing the software, it looks like this. It was detected without any issues. The software is light and seems to be super simple to use. We have those local base themes you could select. And then there is what they call online theme. So there's a lot more where you can select different themes that you want to display on your cooler. Everything is customizable. So you can select, for example, this one. Then you go on this. And here you can select whatever you want. You can adjust the font, you can adjust the sensor, whatever has to be displayed. You can add another reading. And I think this is also using hardware info because when I installed the software and checked the background load, which is about one to max 2%, I also noticed that hardware info service is running in the background. So I'm think so I think it's using hardware info, which is great because it would mean that the information displayed should be accurate. And then once you selected your stuff, you can even go to this page, which is first sight, a gallery, but those are animated like background videos or images and makes it look pretty awesome. I double checked with hardware info and seems to be correct. For example, this value that I added just here is the GPU temperature of the 5060 Ti. So 36 in hardware info and also 36 in the TRCC. And then for example, CPU package power, you can see there is a slight difference between the two, but that might be because this is refreshing more frequently than the TRCC. I'm not sure if they're building like an average in between or whatever, but just in general, it seems to be correct what it's reading. And with this, I built my own small overview with the GPU on top with 36 degrees and the power consumption, also the clock. The GPU, same thing, temperature, power consumption, and the clock that is currently red. I'm running the performance test again at 50% fan speed, and we're also at the same time comparing the readouts that are being displayed right here. So just remember for a second, the CPU temperature about 79 to 80 degrees Celsius, 150 watts under load, and 5.1 gigahertz. And I think with hardware info, it's just reading out either core zero or core one, because those are the ones that come kind of close to it. But as you can see, there are also cores that are much hotter, for example, the core five with about 90 degrees Celsius under load. But at least CPU package power with 150 watts is correct. And also the core clock is reported correctly. Now, after 10 minutes, I can't spot a big difference between the both coolers, but it's also not surprising to see the same kind of temperature because the 9800X 3D will throttle down once it hits this kind of temperature. So that's kind of expected. But the CPU package temperature under load is also the same with about 150 watts. And also the CPU clock, as you can see, under load about 5.1 gigahertz is the same using the thermal write heatsink. So we will now switch to 100% fan speed and see what happens. And even with 100% fan speed, that is resulting in about 1500 RPM, this fan is still in an acceptable noise range. And I measured about 46 decibels out of 30 centimeters distance, so that's again very comparable to the NHD 15 G2. The 10 minutes are almost over, but I can't, at this point, kind of trust my test results. Because first sight, this looks identical. I again had my notes here. It's about the same clock. It's maybe 30 megahertz less than with the Noctua. Temperature is not even one degree Celsius higher. We're at 86.8. And also package power is with 150 the same. This is so close, I can hardly believe it. So I will have to check my footage on the camera to maybe also compare the actual temperatures and not just max temp. One day later and I decided to just run a third test because I wasn't able to get like precise good information out of what we tested so far. So I configured the system for it to run with a fixed clock, with a fixed voltage and everything. And then we were also running Prime95 with a very steady load. And with this scenario, we should be able to compare it much better. And also this time noise normalized with 20 centimeters distance, which is a little bit more accurate for me. I will make sure that both coolers will run or output 40 decibels. And I will let the system heat up for 10 minutes first with Prime95 and then we will start the measurement. I will now monitor with hardware info for 10 minutes and we will keep track of the core temperature, the average across all of the core temperatures. So this should be our metric. And I also made sure that the condition is comparable at least somewhat to the previous measurements. We see a CPU package power of about 160 watts, which is slightly higher. This is caused by the core clock of 5.15 gigahertz and a core voltage of about 1.2 volts. And now after 10 minutes, we have exactly 85.0 degrees Celsius on the core average. 
And now back to the NHD 15 G2 and I'm so curious to see what kind of temperature we will reach. And also the NHD 15 G2 is now running at 40 decibels. The 10 minutes are over and we can see a result of 81.6 degrees Celsius, which means that the NHD 15 G2 is 3.4 degrees Celsius better than the thermal ride. But you can see also settings were exactly the same. The third testing kind of confirmed what we saw in the first two tests, but the first two tests were not that easy to digest. And with three and a half degrees Celsius difference between those two, this makes it like a super price performance option, especially if you consider that this is 44 euros here and this is 145 euros. That's such a huge gap and you even get additional features like the LCD. There's also a non-LCD version, looks very similar to this, just has a different cover on top to still make it look nice. And that one costs even just like 32 euros, which I think makes it probably even a better option than the Freezer 36. They are in a similar like price range, but with this having two additional heat pipes, I think it should be able to dissipate more heat than a Freezer 36 at roughly the same price. And then especially when you add the LCD on top, it's almost unbeatable when it comes to the price performance. Also has other advantages, especially when it comes to the size, for example, on here, with NHD 15 G2, if you have larger memory modules like I have here, you are forced to uplift the side fan like this, which doesn't make it look super nice and it could also collide with the side panel of your system. So that's something that can happen. But overall, it's just absolutely impressive what you get these days in the air cooling market for your money. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.